Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiara Daly, and last week was my birthday. <laughs> I got an awesome book pile. I'm super excited about it, and I have seen a ton of book haul videos on YouTube, and I've always wanted to make my own, so I thought I would film one. We're still in quarantine, and this year, before everything had happened, I had really wanted to rent a cabin in the woods and like get away from everything and just go camping. And when everything happened, we couldn't do that for my birthday. So I had to celebrate a quarantine birthday. So my husband was super sweet and he set up, he basically brought camping to me. He set up a tent, a fire pit, lights outside, and we camped outside for a day. I ended up not having a as much footage as I expected to make a video, I might still try. In addition to being the most awesome husband and getting me a camping trip, he got me this amazing book haul. <laughs> oh shit. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. So first off, y'all know I had to snag The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Just came out, it actually came out the day before my birthday. This is actually a prequel to The Hunger Games. So this one actually follows, I don't actually know how to say his name, Coriolanus, Coriolanus Snow, who is the big bad of The Hunger Games trilogy. And it follows his journey from when he was younger and he is the mentor for one of the tributes from District 12 in The Hunger Games back then, and apparently The Hunger Games are at risk of no longer being a thing, plays out as to like how it became him running the whole thing. Is definitely like a villain tale. I will admit that I never wanted his story. I felt like he was a great bad guy. I didn't really need his origin story, and I'm not super interested in the plot, but I'm so interested in diving back into the Hunger Games world and just that fandom that I'll read it just because I enjoyed what Suzanne Collins brought us before. So then I grabbed The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Trenton. Turton. Damn it. <laughs> so I found this book at Barnes and Noble and I fell in love with this cover. Look at it. It's gorgeous. It has this like 1920s vibe. Every one of the red diamonds has like an interesting image in it. A plague mask, a rocking horse, a martini with an olive, and an open book. I'll read this like snippet from the back. Evelyn Hardcastle will die. Every day until Aiden Bishop can identify her killer and break the cycle. And every day, time the day begins, Aiden wakes up in the body of a different guest. It sounded like a really cool read. It was kind of Groundhog's Day in a my murder mystery setting, and I thought that was a really interesting kind of little spin on it. So additionally, because I've been kind of wanting to get into reading another mystery after having read uh, One of Us is Lying, I went on to like mystery forums on Goodreads and stuff, just like what are mystery novels that people are recommending. And despite having fallen in love with this cover and wanting to read the book on my own, everyone is recommending it. So definitely excited about this. This is really high on my my want list, so I'm really excited about that. Then there's This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. Um, this was a book that was actually recommended by V.E. Schwab, and I feel like her recommendations have not steered me in a wrong direction, so even on the back her blurb says, Holy shit, this was good. Listen to this line on the back here. In the ashes of a dying world, Red finds a letter marked burn before reading. So begins an unlikely correspondence between two rival agents in a war that stretches through vast reaches of time and space. Red belongs to the agency, a post-singularity technotopia, and Blue belongs to Garden, a single vast consciousness embedded into all organic matter. So I read that and I was like, well, clearly this is something I'm going to read. <laughs> like you can't, in my world, I can't read that and like not pick up this book. Okay, so then we've got um, The Boatman's Daughter by Andy Davidson. Now this one is another one that I found at Barnes Noble. It was like on a new, new releases shelf and it was the cover that caught me for this one as well. And I know they say don't like judge a book by its cover, but 
people work really hard to make great covers that catch your eye, so do both things? <laughs> so this book follows Miranda Crabtree, who is ferrying contraband for a mad preacher and his declining band of followers to make ends meet and to protect an old witch and a secret child from harm. But of course, one day he asks her to ferry something really dangerous and things snowball from there. So this blurb is something that caught my attention. It says it's Southern Gothic, backwoods noir, and a mythic imagination of Clive Barker mixed into one. And then this other one says, a noir thriller dipped in the dark mud of the bayou, packed with witches, demons, and gods. And like, how do you say no to that? That sounds so awesome. If you guys don't know, I actually lived for a year and a half down in Louisiana, and just to like be able to visit that world again, um, loved it down there, and I feel like this would kind of bring back those vibes, and having like traversed those, the bayou itself, like it would be cool to read a story that involves the bayou as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, so then we've got The Library at Mount Char which is by Scott Hawkins, and it is another book that is recommended by the Ishwab. Now this book, when I, the way that I pick out books, I'll like flip through them and read random lines on random pages, because I feel like if your writing is good throughout the whole thing, if there's suspense on every page, if something feels like it's going to happen on every page, then I, it sounds promising. So that's how I pick out my books. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it, but um, so this one is about Carolyn, who knows she's a little bit odd, she figures it's only natural when she spent her life locked away in an infinite library, forced to study at the feet of someone who might be God. And I assume it's maybe a multi-POV because then we've got Steve, who's trying to be an ordinary guy, but then Carolyn shows up and she's got a tempting offer, a pair of red rubber galoshes, and exactly $327,000. So that was all I needed to read to be like, wow, I'm very interested in this book, but the writing sounds, um, just the prose alone sounds lyrical and beautiful. And then I wanted to read you, just, just look at how this book opens. The first sentence, Carolyn, blood drenched and barefoot, walked alone down the two lane stretch of blacktop that the Americans called Highway 78. So I was like, all right, so how did Carolyn get blood drenched? How does she not know where she is? How is she so far away that she's referring to it as the Americans call it Highway 78 and not like, she's like so out of her element and she's like, how did she get there? And just when your first sentence can bring up all of those questions and then the back of the book has such interesting random things that you don't know how they connect just by reading the back of the book. I think that sounds like a very interesting story because you want to find out how it all connects, you want to answer all the questions, and that is how you write back flap copy. I'm particularly excited about this one. It might be my next read. I haven't quite decided yet, but very, very interested in that. You rent a cape. Mox, it's not the time. It's not the time though. Yeah, you're very talkative. It's like she woke up from a nap, like, oh, you're filming? Let me come interrupt you. <laughs> As you guys know, I have like a wide variety of interests in things I read. It tends to kind of lean towards fantasy and science fiction, maybe a little bit of literary, um, but I'm into other things too. I read contemporary, which uh, is what this book is. Red, white, and royal blue. I have heard nothing but good things about it. It was either this or American Royals, and it looks like this made it to my life first, so this will be the first one before American Royals. Um, this one is about the son of the president of the United States and the prince, one of the princes of England, um, obviously alternate universe, but um, they are rivals, like they don't like each other. So in order to stage a truce between the two rivals, they make this kind of friendship in the public eye, but it blooms into something more, into a romance and, um, I think it sounds cute and romantic and it's a very big departure of what I usually read. Um, so it, I'm not, I don't jump at contemporary very often. So the fact that I was interested in something like this um, is kind of exciting because it gives me something different to treat myself with, you know? Mox, 
It's not the time. So I just finished Illuminate by Jay Kristoff and um, Amy Kaufman, which was awesome. I loved the quirky exposition. The story was pretty great. Um, loved the AI and everything. I have a review on it on my website, which will be down below if you're interested in reading the reviews. And was really excited about reading the second one, which is Gemina. This one, it seems like it doesn't follow the original two uh, characters. It sounds like it's following Hannah and Nick in like a different spaceship and the people from the first book are like approaching, like they're going to come into the plot at some point. This one is talking about alien predators and a slightly dangerous wormhole malfunction, which sounds hilarious. <laughs> the first book, I read it so fast and I'm looking forward to reading this just as quickly. The sun is like coming right in through the window and it's like <laughs> all of a sudden. So that's the thing now. I haven't read any Terry Pratchett uh, except for Good Omens, which he wrote, co-wrote with Neil Gaiman, which was an awesome book and an equally awesome, maybe even more than equally awesome series on, I think it was on Amazon Prime. So definitely check those out if you haven't. But I wanted to read Terry Pratchett, just one of his works, because I know he's, he's funny and he's witty and he's got like these Douglas Adam vibes. So I definitely knew that I wanted to pick up one of his books. Now I found The Thief of Time online, which was about how the monks of history control time. And I was like, that's a really cool concept. So I wanted to read that and I realized that it's like the eighth book in a series or something. So I was like, well, I should probably start with book one, which means I will be reading The Color of Magic. So it follows a failed wizard who is sent out to be a guide and protector of a rich insurance salesman. And this particular book is um, four short stories and everything takes place on Discworld, which is a flat planet uh, going through space that is held up by four enormous elephants and is flying through space on a giant turtle. And of course the opening of the book is the turtle flying through space and like explaining Discworld from like the most external point of view possible. But um, the four stories, the first one was like, I won't ex dis describe all of them, but the first one was like, you know, they're, they're a bunch of thieves and they're getting assaulted and stuff. They're mostly saved by their overprotective luggage, which has teeth. And then the second story was like, they are the main characters in a dice game played by gods. And it's like barbarians are trying to steal from them and everything. And it's like this big D and D game. So for all of my D and D nerds, <laughs> I was like, wow, the second story sounds like, you know, one of our campaigns. <laughs> so I'm, Definitely looking forward to that. Just reading the first page, I didn't want to stop. It's witty and funny, and it's full of really juicy, like, details. He's obviously, I know Terry Pratchett's going to be a wonderful read. I'm not, his writing's going to be great. I have no doubt about that. So, really looking forward to that. Then we've got The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith. My husband was confused because he thought he bought two of the same book because there was the Library of the Unwritten, then there was the Library at Mount Char, and he was like, why are there so many library books? <laughs> because I'm a reader and we like books about books. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> so this one is about Claire, who is a head librarian in the Unwritten Wing, which is a neutral space in hell. <laughs> and it's basically where all of the unwritten books live but some of them get restless and one of the heroes of one of the books escapes and is trying to go um, chase down his author for reasons that are not listed. Like, I don't know if he's angry or he wants to continue being written or w w how that works, but uh, Claire has to track him down, capture him with the help of a former muse and current assistant Brevity and a nervous and sweet demon named Leto. And it was, it's just such, it feels really unique. It's, it, why is it in hell for starters? That was an interesting aspect. It wasn't just a library of unwritten, it is also in hell, which I thought was really an interesting um, take on it. Then it starts with Claire. So I'm wondering if um, it's a multi POV. And the first, I read like the first paragraph 
and the language in it, and even just like randomly flipping through it, the language and the prose is beautifully written. Every single sentence that I've read was like, oh, the just the verb choices and the words, and like it was like really pretty. <laughs> so I was like, well, even if I'm not like completely interested in the story, which I am interested in the plot because it's it's a unique little twist she has going on. AJ Hackwith, she or he, them, they. It's an interesting twist they have going on. And uh, in addition to that, the, the writing is gorgeous. So I'm really excited to dig into that one as well. Then lastly, we have The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. Um, I've heard crazy great things about this. It's a very popular book. Um, and I originally saw it in the, in the bookstore and just fell in love with the cover. Look at that cover. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful cover. This book is about a girl named January who is in a mansion full of like a bunch of artifacts and like unique things and she ends up finding a book that transports her through different worlds, through different doors in the book and every chapter is titled with a different type of door, like the leather bound door, blue door, the ivory door. As she's going through it, she's realizing there are a lot of uh, connections with her own life and a lot of maybe similarities or maybe her life is like historically is starting to tie into things that she's reading in the book. I'm not exactly sure, it's not super clear on the book flap, but I thought it was interesting enough to pique my interest. It's got these kind of like never-ending story vibes. So I'm definitely interested in reading it, it, but it was definitely the cover of this one that piqued my interest first, in addition to the story and like everyone reviewing it and liking it, so yeah. Just a quick thing. Um, it's not technically like a novel or a book, but I did also get The Descent into Avernus which is another um, RPG for Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, it counts as a book, so I thought I would include it. <laughs> so that's it. That is my entire book pile. I'm super excited. I cannot pick which book I wanna read first. If you guys have read any of them, I would love to hear your thoughts on anything you've read or anything that piqued your interest too. If you're like, wow, actually, that sounded really awesome. Tell me in the comments. And if you have any ideas on what you think I should read first out of those, also mention that because I am having trouble deciding. <laughs> anyway, that is all I have for you guys today, and I will see you guys next time. See you later.